Well, hello, friends. Thank you for joining me for this absolutely wonderful conversation about a story of conversion, a conversion of a family of Freemasons who had an experience with our Blessed Mother through the miraculous men. Hello, Robin. Thank you for joining Hi. me over there, over in America. <laughs> Thank you for joining me from Montana. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Robin, please pronounce your surname because I'll probably get it wrong. McKelkey. McKelkey, Robin McKelkey. We met on pilgrimage when I was in Garabandal and I was so moved by your story. I thought you got to come on and share this with us. A, an amazing story, friends, again, about how Our Lady used one person to convert an entire family through the Miraculous Medal. I know you shared with me prior to this that your family are from the Freemasons. And so perhaps you can start there and perhaps share a little bit of a backdrop of your story with your family and the role they played in the Freemasons. Well, um, my dad was a Freemason and he became a Freemason because his dad was. Right. Um, I also have it on my mother's side where I have some great uncles and uncles that were Freemasons or at least one uncle. Um, and cousins. So, I mean, I, I, I grew up being very proud that they were because of the Shriners Hospital and all the good that they do. So okay. um, we didn't, we didn't know anything other than that. Yeah. Yeah. So you thought it was a, a good organization who helped others, but in terms of believing in God, believing in Jesus, was, was that in your life in the family home at all? Well, we grew up knowing that Jesus was Lord and um, didn't really know anything about his his mother or um, and, and we knew the Trinity. And I would pray as a little girl. I just always had that desire to pray. Um, many of my friends were Catholic and they would always go to catechism. And I didn't know what that was, but I wanted it. Um and we would, I think I went to Sunday school maybe five times growing up. So I, we just didn't, we just didn't um, go to church. So what was your view on Catholics as such growing up? Because a lot of Protestants don't always have, I guess, and particularly Freemasons may not have a healthy view of Catholics. So in terms of your overall family view, and indeed your father's view of Catholics, was there an opinion on us at all or... Um, not really. I'm not really. I mean, it was, we all believed in the same God, right? Even, even the Freemasons yeah. in our eyes believed yes. in the same God. Yes. So just, I guess, moving forward then, now, right now you're a practicing Catholic, a mom. So you were introduced to the Catholic faith through your husband, right? So share a little bit about that. Okay. Um, in 1990, well, I started dating my husband in, I think, 19, 1988. And um, and he would go to my church, well, because I, I was searching. I was searching. And I thought that we were Presbyterian, but <laughs> we have nothing to prove that. Um, and other than my mom and dad were mar married in the Presbyterian church. Um, so he would come with me to the Presbyterian church when we were dating and I would go to mass with him and his family was a very faithful family. I mean, he had seven kids in his family. He was on the parish council. He was, he lived his faith and I admired that. Um, and I, his mother was a saintly woman. I, 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 she was amazing. I just hope I grow up to be like her one day. Um, his family, all of his siblings lived the faith and his dad was a very faithful man. I mean, they never missed mass. So they were very good examples for me, but they accepted me and um, I felt love for them more than my own family, mm -hmm. um, which I'll get to later. But um, anyway, so I, I wanted to become Catholic. So in 1990, um, April 14th of 1990 on Easter Vigil, 
I became Catholic. I was baptized. And um, and Kenny always told me, as my husband, he always told me, don't become Catholic because I'm Catholic. Become Catholic because you want to become Catholic, which was really good advice. So. so share with us about, I guess, that journey of joining the church and how it changed you as a person. Well, um, when I got baptized, I cried and cried and cried. Um, I, I didn't know what hit me, but um, I knew something very profound happened to me. So did um, you do a, a spirit and light seminars or what did you think? Obviously, it was the Holy Spirit. Did you take a course or something that? that no. no. My mother-in-law told me that she just consoled me and said, it's the Holy Spirit. And she just was very Friendly. excited for me, yeah. you know, so. Um, but in the, and then after that, I started, before I had children, um, I started teaching um, catechism. And then when I had children, I followed them through school. So I was a catechist for 30 years. Um, after they graduated, I taught youth group for another 10 years. So, and I don't do it anymore, but I do other things. At yes. church. Yeah. So your family looking at you, I guess, looking from the inside out, seeing this Catholic who's, who's really living and breathing the faith. You must have had an impression on them. Well, I didn't, I didn't until, so in 2007, I changed jobs and I started going to daily mass and I thought I had this Catholic thing all figured out. Well, I still don't, but I, I yes. learned a lot. Yes. Um, anyway, so um, in, in 2013, my priest said, um, you're going to go to Cum Cristo, which is like Curcile, but it just allows Protestants in. Yeah. And um, so I thought, well, that's a retreat. That can't be all bad. So I did. And the last day of the retreat is when my head and my heart just collided. I, I, it became, it was overwhelming. And that, at that point is when my family started seeing a difference in me. Yes, yes. Something similar happened to to, to myself, Robin, because I did a course in uh, the Spirit and Light many, many years uh -huh. ago. And mm -hmm. um, I was on an intellectual journey with the Catholic faith. I had a, a, an experience in Medjugorje, but I wanted to find out more. And I had lots of questions. And when I did the Spirit and Light seminars, when the Holy Spirit really did his work on me. Bang, boom. <laughs> there was no more questions about Mary. There was none of this. It was like as if those questions were answered for me interiorly. Yeah. The, it, it, was it was a done deal. Everything was settled. Mm -hmm. So I totally get where you're coming from. So here we are. You're, you're really growing in your faith. Your family are looking at you and saying, my goodness, what's going on here? Tell us about... This miraculous medal journey. This is a fascinating uh, story, friends. It really, really is. So share with us about the miraculous medal. Okay, well, um, through my journey, I asked um, Jesus to introduce his mother to me because I, you know, I was Catholic, but I didn't, I didn't understand the, the Mary thing. And um they kept saying, we don't worship her, we venerate her, we honor her. And so anyway, I just, I started learning about Mary a little bit. Well, my priest um, was a, an exorcist and I was on his prayer. I was, a, I was on his team as a prayer warrior. And there was probably five of us, I think. And we all went to Mundelein. Um, to a seminary for the deliverance conference, healing and deliverance conference. And there um, they had a talk on Freemasons. Well, I had no idea. I, again, I was proud of my dad. And then they started telling me, telling us about the blood oaths and how it affects your generations down the road. And um, I, I just, I was devastated. And the 33 mm -hmm. degrees. Yes, there's 33 degrees in the, in the Masons. Yes. And um, 
and I had no idea what degree my dad was, but, um, but it was, it was very devastating to me to where I cried for hours <laughs> as they were going through this. And I can't remember everything about it because it was so overwhelming. But, um, afterwards I talked to the exorcist and he, uh, very lovingly said not to fret and that, he says, do you go to mass? And I said, yes. And he says, regularly? And I said, daily. And he said, perfect. And he says, every time that the priest holds up the precious blood, he said, you put your dad and all, all of the family members in the cup and just ask Jesus to wash them clean and show them truth with his precious blood. And so I thought, well, I can do that. Um, so then I went to mass during the conference because we had mass every day and we did liturgy of the hours. So we were very steeped in, in the faith. And when I was at mass, I, I saw myself. I said, I had a vision of myself going to my dad and putting miraculous metal around his neck. And I said to the Lord, I said, Oh, yeah, right. And I just kind of dismissed it. Well, I knew that I needed to get him a miraculous medal. So we stopped at every gift store and could not find one. When I got home, I told my sister-in-law about this. And this is Kenny's sister and one of his sisters. And she says, well, I happen to have one. She says, and it's blessed. So I'll get it to you. So when I got in the mail, I sat outside my parents' house because I knew I had to do this. And uh, and I was fearful of, of my dad rejecting me because I didn't know how he would react. And so I, um, and in the meantime, I had been talking to my dad about the faith and just, he was, he was, he wanted to know more. Yeah. Anyway, so when I went in there, I, it happened exactly the way I saw it, I, I saw what he was wearing. He was sitting in the same chair. I was kneeling down before him and he put his head down and I put the miraculous metal over his head and he wore that faithfully. Incredible, incredible. And about your other family members too, there's what you say, 17 of them now in the church. Is that right? How many? Yes. 17 of them in the hands of you, Robin. Quite incredible. Take us through that. Did, did each one of these people all receive the miraculous medal also? Yes. Yes. I gave them all a miraculous medal. But share a little bit about that also. Well, I, I give it out like candy now because I know that my dad, I, the Blessed Mother, it, it's, it's her. It's not me. Because if it was me, they would have all been baptized that first year. Uh, but she had, she knows what's right. She knows, she knows how to do it. And and I just, all I did was give the medal out and prayed. But um, the first year, my sister went to the Holy Land with me, um, Tracy. And uh, she, 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 well, it was eight people, including Tracy, her daughters, and a friend, and my mom a lot of family members, all eight went to our CIA that year. And five of them ended up baptized that year, that first year. And then the others, my mom, let's see, that was 2000 and I can't remember, 2000, I wrote it all down, but 2015. Mm -hmm. Then the following year um, was the big year. My dad died that year. Um, but Every year after that, there's been a baptism. And I was the, the sponsor for all of them. So, um, but it is Miraculous Medal that did that. Yes, an absolute, really, really, a true miracle to say the least. So how has your family changed? I mean, there must oh. be an absolute abundance of graces and blessings in your family since this all took place. It, it's just beautiful. Well, you know, my family, uh, we had a lot of 
of dissension and dysfunction in our family. There was constantly fighting and bickering. And my goodness, Tracy and I didn't get along into our forties. And um, I just, jealousy and all kinds of things, but there was just constantly division and we know who that is. Um, and God is love. And I, Kenny's family was a great example for me because I felt, I I loved them so much yeah I didn't expect that and when my family started knowing God mm -hmm. God is love so we had we had love in our family for the first time as a, as a grown adult I I experienced a we're so tight now. I mean, shoot, I go on pilgrimages with them now. And <laughs> it's just amazing. I mean, my, my, my sisters pray with me regularly. We have a, a Wednesday, every Wednesday night we go and we pray. Um, their, their faith, my youngest sister has written this most beautiful poem about the, the cross and um, just, you, you just can't believe the change in us. It's just it's it's God. It's it is indeed. It is indeed. Robin, you know, there might be I always ask folk to maybe speak into those people who may be watching, who find it difficult to believe that God exists or that the power that the Blessed Mother has in terms of the role of the, the role she plays in the life of a Catholic. So what would you say to those maybe who who are either don't believe in the Catholic faith or maybe have lost their faith or walked away from the church or are sitting on the side of the fence, what would you say to those people to encourage them that, look, God exists. He is a the person who can change lives. Our Blessed Mother will take you by the hand. Just speak into that for us and share with people because we, our world needs it more so than ever, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So speak into that a little bit for us. Well, I would say, well, we're all designed. God created us to need him and want him. And pain and um, experiences and hurt and all of that is what blocks our heart from it. And I um, just out of experience of loved ones who have had that, mm, not, not just back off. I would say, be honest with God. And just be raw with him because he already knows what you're thinking. And I would say, prove it. I would ask him to show himself and you, it will happen. It will happen. And then, then invite him in. Just try to try to picture your heart open and just allow the Holy Spirit to come in because he will never force himself on you. He's so gentle and he's, he wants what's best for you. And I would just, like I say, be raw. Just mm -hmm. tell him what your obstacles are and just ask him to show himself to you. Yes, yes. Well, Robin, I just want to say thank you to you personally because you have been, Our Lady has used you mightily in bringing your family home. And I can pray continued blessings on you as you journey in your Catholic faith. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you when I met you on pilgrimage by accident. But as we all know, <laughs> there are never any accidents in, in, <laughs> when you become for sure. a Christian. You never. God uses every opportunity and more Our Lady will use every opportunity to, to spread her message of love and more importantly, unity, because there's never been, I think, a greater a time where there's been more of attack on the family. And we can see now how Our Lady used you mightily to demonstrate how important it is about family and that we all are, we unify with each other, regardless of our differences, that we love each other. And what God can do, what God, what miracle God can pull off at each and every family. So I want to thank you for coming on today and talking to me. I know you're seven hours behind me out there in Montana. It was a grace to meet you and your family when we were on. We were going to see the True Cross of Christ friends um, down in Spain. We're all in Garavandal and retreat. And it's always the people you meet that make it so special, right, Robin? Isn't it? It's just always sure. the people. And of course, Our Lady and Jesus. So look, thank you, Robin. Thank you again. Thank you.
And Thank until you. Next, until next time, friends, we hope you enjoyed this conversation and I know you're going to be richly blessed. Do share with others, subscribe to the channel and until next time, friends, bye-bye for now.